Hey, my name is Tim Buell. I'm a drummer living here in Nashville, Tennessee, and we're continuing today our series on Finale for Drummers. Today, we're going to answer a question that I think a lot of people have had. I know I've been asked it a lot, so it's about time to get around to answering it. And the issue people are having is they've programmed a drum part in a DAW, a digital audio workstation, a recording program, and it sounds like they want it to. But when they go and they export this from their DAW and load in the MIDI into Finale, it ends up looking something like this. Now that looks nothing like any drum part I want to read personally as a drummer. So today we're going to talk about what's going on and how we can fix it. So the first step is, you know, you're going to want to program a MIDI drum part in a digital audio workstation. This isn't really what the video is about, so I'm not going to go into depth with that, but I'm here in Logic. You can do this with any DAW that you're working in. It doesn't have to be Logic, it can be Pro Tools, it can be Digital Performer, whatever. But you have your MIDI. Sometimes this score in your DAW will look a little different. Sometimes it'll be accurate. This is not accurate, but we're not worried about that today because we're not uh, we're not going to mess around with the notation in the DAW. We just care about what it looks like in Finale. So what you want to do is you want to export this as MIDI from your DAW. So you want to go here, go up to File, Export, and we're going to export selection as MIDI file. Click that, name it whatever you want, and you'll end up with a .mid file um, that you can load into Finale, which again is, you know, kind of where things start to get weird, but let's do it anyway. So to get this loaded into Finale, what you can do is open up Finale, go to File, Open, or Command-O, or Control-O if you're on a PC. Open, find the MIDI file on your hard drive, hit open. And in this, you'll probably want to mirror these settings so you can, you know, get it to look like, you know, mine does at the end. But honestly, a lot of this doesn't really matter. But yes, I would start with these settings um, just in general. I think the important one is tracks become stabs. Um, so we're going to hit OK. And again, it's, it's going to look a little wacky. So your first instinct might be, okay, what if I take all of this? Because right now, even though we told it to set up a percussion clef, this is still in, it's showing a bass clef and, you know, all the notes are kind of all over the place. So fear not, we're going to get this figured out. Um, the first step that I would do is I would just copy and paste this whole thing and I would open it in a template that's actually a drum set notation template. I'm not going to go through that. I went over that in lesson one of Finale for Drummers for this series. So if you really want to know how to set up your own uh, Finale template, that's a video you can watch. But I'm going to hit Command C and I'm going to open up a template that I like to use. And now I'm going to zoom in and with my measure tool, I'm going to click the first measure and hit Command D. Okay, and now what we have to do is we kind of have to reverse engineer which notes are what. And this is kind of a tedious process, but the nice thing is once you do it once, um, you'll get a little legend that you can follow like this, and basically you can convert it all instantly. So let's walk through exactly what we can do here. Uh, in Finale, there's this helpful little tool. If I go to uh, Measure and I click this, uh, just highlight this measure. I can go to Utilities and Transpose Percussion Notes. And you can see here, I have four voices and they're telling me um, basically what note they're showing now and what, I, what, what note I can change it to. So what I want to do is I want to figure out which notes are what. Um, so I know for a fact that uh, these notes in yellow, um, they go up in order. So this lowest note here is note 57. So I know just by looking at this notation, I know that 57 should actually be a kick drum. So what I can do is I can go to 57, select bass drums, kick drum. Now I have a theory that'll be okay. And I also know that on that downbeat, it starts with a crash cymbal. So I know just by looking at this notation, it's showing up as a wood, low wood block, but I want to change it to a cymbal crash symbol. Kind of the next beat. Um, I can look at what's going on here in this hi-hat foot. I know just because of what the program part is, I know that this is actually supposed to be a hi-hat closed symbol. And then 59 is the last thing that's left. It's this note here, and that's where the snare drum is supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead, hit snare drum, snare drum, and select snare drum. And then I can hit OK. Wow. That actually looks exactly like I wanted it to. 
So you do have to do a little detective work. Now I went ahead and undid that because if I just fix one measure at a time, one, it'll take a long time, but two, uh, you know, this, this, if I fix this measure and then move to the next measure or highlight other stuff, if I just fix one thing, one measure at a time, um, now I'll start mixing, okay, some things are fixed, some things are not fixed, and it gets really, really confusing. So what I wanna do instead is I wanna go through and just for each measure, I wanna just decode the thing. And that's why I made a little chart like this um, for myself, because now I can go through and as I, as I kind of decode, okay, um, logic imports it into finale is this note, but I actually want it to be this note. I can just keep a, like make a little legend of what is what. So that first and second measure are decoded because there's only those four voices. So for this next measure, there's a couple things that are introduced that I'm not uh, familiar with. So I'm going to go to utilities, transpose percussion note. And now, uh, I have a couple things that I didn't see earlier. And uh, those things would be the hi-hat closed. I didn't see the hi-hat closed earlier. And the hi-hat closed is actually supposed to be the ride symbol. And I know that because on this measure, um, the it goes to, instead of hi-hat, it goes to the ride symbol. And that's not showing up here. So I know that the hi-hat closed is supposed to be the ride symbol. Uh, the woodblock is the same. 59 is the same, uh, 57 is the same. The, the only other note that wasn't in that first measure is the hi-hat foot. Uh, and the hi-hat foot uh, is showing up for whatever reason as 50. So I wanna make a note that 50, uh, this note right here is actually supposed to be the very bottom note is actually supposed to be the hi-hat foot. And then the last measure, there's a little tom fill here. And this tom fill, I just know by looking at it, because I, I know I programmed the MIDI part, I know it's supposed to be high tom, high tom, low tom, low tom, uh, floor tom, floor tom. So what it's showing up as, as if I highlight this measure, go to transpose percussion notes, uh, it's showing up as, you know, floor tom one, kick drum, and then uh, bass drum. So what I want to do is make a note, and you can see here um, for... Bass drum, that's actually floor tom one, which is what I want. For floor tom one, that's actually the low mid tom. Now that you've decoded that, all you have to do is select everything, go to transpose percussion notes, and now that you've made this little legend, uh, all you have to do is go through, highlight all the measures, and then switch over. So 50 is supposed to be the hi-hat foot, 57 is supposed to be the kick drum, 59 is supposed to be the snare drum, the kick drum is supposed to be the low tom, the low wood block is supposed to be the crash cymbal, the bass drum is supposed to be floor tom one, Hi-hat closed is supposed to be the ride symbol. Hi-hat foot is supposed to be hi-hat closed. And floor tom one is supposed to be the low mid tom. So now, with all of that done, I can hit OK. And now I have beautiful, corrected, perfect sheet music that I can go ahead and, you know, now that it's in my score, I can make any little adjustments that I want. Um, this isn't a perfect science. Uh, you know, different drum sets and different DAWs are going to use different MIDI notes for certain sounds. So there's really no way to like automate this and make it just work across platforms. So what I would recommend is anytime you're using, uh, you know, a certain drum kit in whatever DAW of your choice, go through and just in quarter notes kind of do kick drum snare drum, uh, hi-hat, whatever, so that you know where all those are. And then once you import it into Finale, it'll tell you where those end up. And that way you can kind of decode it and um, you're kind of off to the races. And now you have sheet music that's legible, that looks like drum notation and plays just like drum notation. So here's what the original drum groove sounded like. Here's what it sounds like in Finale now that we've converted it. So I hope that helps. 
I know that the process can kind of seem like a lot, but uh, like I said, every DAW has slightly different MIDI notes it uses for certain sounds. Even every drum kit in your DAW might have slightly different variations of what the sounds are. And you also might like notating, uh, you know, some people uh, write their hi-hats where I have my ride cymbals. Drum notation is not standard, so it does get a little confusing. So that's why this process is kind of a little tricky. But once you get the hang of it, once you decode it, uh, you'll have your little legend that you can keep in a spreadsheet somewhere and you can reference it. So anytime you load up drum notation, you can go ahead and just convert it really quick and you're done. And it's notation and it's ready to go.